here's the city of Baltimore. There's M&T Bank Stadium. We're on the road. Hey. Hey, everybody. Welcome to part two of this road trip video. If you are enjoying this series, please let me know down in the comments. If you missed part one, go back and check it out. In this section, we are going from Maryland to upstate New York. So let's just get right into it. This is Adventure by Carney. Let's go. Cabin. Yo. As we pulled into Baltimore, Lauren and I were both very hungry. So we looked up a brewery, obviously. When we got to the brewery, they said they didn't serve food, but across the street was one of the best up and coming unknown restaurants. So we had to go check it out. We got there, they were closing their doors, but they said, come on in. We went inside and we got to know them a little bit. And then here's what happened. We are here at Groundwork and uh, we're very lucky. They just closed, but they literally opened the doors for us to let us have a quick meal. Look how beautiful this is right here in the heart of Baltimore. Two stories, look at the copper pots and pans. Look at the lighting. Look at the dining room. Look at the open kitchen, second story. And they're literally making us their two best dishes and getting us complimentary drinks and they're closed. They don't know who we are. They're just awesome and kind of, how nice are they? Delicious, they just don't know what. So we never make the same thing. I love that. Yeah, we never make the same thing. That is my favorite thing. Nice. I'll take you down to the school first. So we have a culinary arts training program that is 12 weeks long. Um, and the doors will open on this side. When did you guys start that program? That program started back in 20, but it was open for, um, I think like four months and then COVID shut them down. Mm -hmm. And then the school reopened during COVID and ran, so they're now in their eighth cohort. order. It's wow. 15 students per cohort. It's so while we from, you get surf safe certified, you have a chance to get your surf safe managerial. If you fail, you can take it every 30 days till you pass. Um, you also get hotel and hospitality, so you graduate with six certifications. Wow. The only criteria is to be 18 to 80. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, if you, we pay our students $200 bi-weekly to attend. If they drive, wow. we give them a $75 gas card bi-weekly oh, to help wow. out with gas. If they catch the bus, we give them a 30-day bus pass. Wow. Um, we give them brand new chef and shoes. We provide them with chef and uniforms. They get two uniforms that they will graduate wow. in. Like our students this cohort don't even know that the two uniforms they have Belong to them. Wow, that's amazing. So, yeah, um, whether you are homeless or food deprivation, you need child care, that is what he is for, and he is shining on his spot. He is an excellent guy. I mean, he's the right one. Can't wash your clothes, we have a laundry place, which is right across the alley here. Okay. All this place was started by a young woman in the priest 40 years ago. They just celebrated their 40th anniversary. They feed this neighborhood breakfast and lunch every single day. Oh, that's I amazing. I a whole bowl of cereal and a grilled cheese. I mean, Chef Ann and Chef Keisha are amazing. And wow. then Chef Paul comes every Thursday, and his food is always amazing. <laughs> like, sometimes I'll be like, it's Thursday, Paul, cooking. <laughs> oh, my but, God. Yeah, absolutely amazing. This is the classroom. This is where all the action happens. Workforce counselor who also brings other restaurants in. So if we don't have space for you here, it's about opportunity somewhere else. We're pushing you straight out yeah. to a job. And right now we have a 92% success rate. And you are awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh my Everybody knows I love my shops. This is our student lounge. Wow. So our students get a hot breakfast, nice lunch every single day, prepared by Chef Jonathan Nixon himself. And they study off of the Ruby program. So the school found that it was cheaper to actually purchase the program than it was to rent it. So each student owns their program for the rest of their life and they can continue to build their life as part even after they graduate. Wow. Tell me this is my okay. <laughs> So this is our methylene area. This is where we throw all our five events, our um, Mexican food, and then we all of that fresh herbs and outside. And yeah. Yep. Love this. Just lounging. Love this. Just lounging. 
I love this so much, yeah. yeah. And I love this copper <laughs> chandelier. I, you have no idea. It is amazing. It is so great. I didn't even see the cutting boards. Oh my God, thank you so much. No, this is amazing. Right here at the open kitchen, they also have a chef's table right here where you could eat and literally watch your food get made right here. All right, so we have our food to go because literally they were closing and let us in. Lauren got the bronzino, I got the steak. We got free egg rolls, a free salad. His homemade sauces, broccoli. Bro uh, the, the broccoli and cheese looks amazing. We got some awesome sours here, some wilds. They do everything right here in French barrels. We're gonna give you a full tour in a second, but I gotta eat this steak and this fish, and then we're gonna get into the beer and how beautiful this brewery is, and what a great up and coming location, because you got an amazing restaurant across the street, a pizzeria next door, and a brewery with some legitimately top-notch uh, beers. So we're drinking through the beers, and we are very lucky enough. I'll have you introduce yeah, yourself. Josie Schwartz. Uh, brew the beer here at Suspended Brewing. Uh, we're in Baltimore, Maryland. We're in the historic neighborhood of Pigtown, which is in southwest Baltimore. We were just talking about our wild program, which is relatively young for the beers that we're trying to do. We started in 2019. Uh, December, actually, Christmas Day, was the first, first wild batch that I made. And uh, we have been doing everything just really small batch. We had maybe three barrels, one barrel to start, three barrels uh, shortly after, and then we finally we have 14 barrels that we pull from. So still a very, very, very small lot of beer, but we have three house cultures that we maintain. Most of them is Britannomyces uh, bruxellensis. It's uh, it was a, started as a pure pitch from White Lab. So we do nice. everything very true to Lambic style, minus the spontaneous fermentation. Yeah. Uh, Kentian is sort of the guiding star for us, so it's a 65. The creme de la creme of the wild family, yeah. yes. So it's a 65-35 split of pale barley and unmalted wheat. Uh, sometimes we get a little fancy if we want to do uh, certain barrels and we want to play around with certain flavors and textures, but um, yeah, uh, that's really the base, and then we play around with grapes, peaches, raspberries, we just did strawberries for the first time. Like the Belgians figured out very, very quickly how to make sour beer very lovely and pleasantly acidic. And I mean, in the beginning, all beers were sour. Yeah. Like all, all beer was sour. And so um, we try to not reinvent the wheel, just try to learn tried and true methods and conditions that make very pleasantly acidic beer, nothing that's overly sour. Um, and yeah. We're excited. We're finally, we have the most barrels that we've ever had. We, all of them are at least a year old at this point, which is lovely to be so able cool. to blend things that have a certain character or lean one way or lean another way. The pit, for example, that was, that took us 16 months to make. Partly it was done after a year, but then when we put it on grapes, it, you know, I'm still learning about grape varietals, so it didn't have the character that we wanted. And so um, that beer got fermented five times. No um, way. So it got like a traditional Saccharomyces fermentation of like the mix of Belgian yeah. ale yeast that we use. And then just before it hits final gravity, we put it in a barrel so that the Britannomyces can eat. Um, this way it doesn't get too sour. Um, that and meat. then uh, we pulled it out. So that was fermentation number two. Then it got a fermentation on some Juvisi grapes. They didn't have as much character as the Petit Sirah ones that we used last year. Okay. So we just felt like we wanted to punch that character Where are you out. sourcing your fruit from or your grapes from? There's a company that does it where they contract with multiple wineries. Okay. They're all based out of Sonoma County. And okay. And the Sinjubizi didn't have as much character as the Petit Sirah grapes, so we wanted to punch that up. So we fermented it yet another time on Merlot grapes. And then, of course, all of our wild beers, um, they go to terminal gravity, and then we re-ferment them in the final vessel, whether that's a keg or whether a bottle. So awesome. So, uh, Congratulations, because honestly, like we read reviews, that's why we stopped here on our way between Florida and New York. But yeah, your, your, your sours are friggin' amazing. We haven't even gotten into the IPAs yet. Yeah, which I'm excited about. This deserves all the credit. <laughs> that is true. And thank yeah, thanks for, thanks for having us. This is awesome. All right, eat and drink time. Eat and drink. Eat, drink, and be merry. We're still sampling. We got a very special bottle. We were going to buy more, but they gave us this. This is uh, something that's not released. We also got the lager which is super delicious. Love it here. So the Ravens, who will be losing to the Jets, play right here. That's M&T Bank Stadium. And this is where the Orioles play. Good old Camden Yards. Came here when I was a kid for a game, got a tour, went around uh, the stadium. Yeah, but there was no game. I got to see all like the dugouts and back, back really in the park. Nice. Yeah, it's very cool. 
There's Camden Station, and we're on the road. We're surprising Kenny and Ox. In what for world we live, I can't believe the, What's up? the boy's a shooby. Hi. He's a shooby now. We made it. We made it. We made it. Mom's hands! <laughs> What's up? What's going on? Hi. You too, dude. The next day. Beautiful morning here in Atlantic City. Foggy as can be. But you know what's smiling? This guy. Woo. Legitimately. You cannot see that far. Yeah, no. Actually, you can see better through the phone than in real life. <laughs> it's a beautiful Friday morning. Uh, we haven't slept yet, but Lauren's asleep, but I'm about to enter Harrods Casino. Gotta play a little poke before we go. We're going No Sleep Fridays. Let's go! Yeah! Oh, I miss that smell. Broken dreams. <laughs> and hope. We got a situation here. Uh, I'm gonna need a fill. Um, all right, it's here. Thank you. Well, I'm here at the Borgata Poker Room, and after a five-hour session of crazy ups and downs, we were up the whole time, and I took two bad beats within 15 minutes. Ugh, cooler. Built it back up, and we're up. Uh, we're up pretty nice. So we're gonna cash out in just a little bit and hit the road and head north. Also, they closed the AC Expressway because of forest fires, so we couldn't leave earlier, so it gave me an extra hour here in the poker room, which Next great. stop, White House Subs. This is a landmark in AC. If you're here, you gotta come here. Look at the size of this sub. It doesn't fit on the camera. It's tremendous. It's longer than my shoulder length. It's insane. Thanks, White House Subs. We're leaving AC. Next stop, we're hitting Jersey. Let's go. Three hours later. We're here at the village of Whippany, established back in 1676. I mean, yeah, this is all very cool, but we're actually here double tap brewing. This just mean old post office, super cool. And not only does it have some pretty good beers, according to Google, it's an old post office, and we are being joined by the one, the only, Mr. John Thorne. We're about to drink some beers. see the old uh, loading doors for the post office but this is the old I'm guessing packaging room and whatnot but now where they make all the magic happen <laughs> 